Daniel chapter number 3 verses number 1 through 7. Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold whose height was three score cubits and the breadth thereof six cubits. He set it up in the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king sent to gather together the princes, the governors, and the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces, and came to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Then the princes, the governors, the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the princes were gathered together unto the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. And they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then an herald cried aloud, To you it is commanded, O people, nation, and languages, that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psalm tree, dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. And whoso falleth not down and worshipeth shall the same hour be cast into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. Therefore, at that time, when all the people heard the sound of the coronet, flute, harp, sackbut, psalm tree, and all the kinds of music, all the people, the nations, the languages, fell down and worshipped the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. We're about to jump into this third chapter and dig out some interesting truths, hidden mysteries, and let's get started. This image that the king had made was purely spectacular. It says it was three score cubits. We know a score, as we said before in the previous chapter, was what we may think of as 20 feet. So three score cubits would be 3 times 20 or 60 cubits. 60 cubits turn out to be 90 feet. A golden statue that's 90 feet tall. A nine story tall golden statue. That's 6 cubits wide or 9 feet across. So you have 60 cubits by six cubits or 90 feet by nine feet. Can you imagine the pure wealth or cost to have so much gold? And so the king obviously was proud of his achievement. So he put out an edict. So he put out an edict. If anyone, if you hear the sound of the instruments, you have better bow down or face death. So this image was set up in the plains of Dura. And this is a map of the location of Babylon. We assume it's over here in this area. As we know, this is the Euphrates River right here. This is the Tigris River over here. And we know in the middle is what's commonly understood as the Fertile Crescent. And here's another shot at what is believed to be Dura or the plains of Dura as well. So we can move on and we can see here are some of those six different instruments that was named that once you hear when you hear the sounds of these six different instruments fall down. We know the sackbud is an early form of the trombone and that the dulcimer is an early form of what's known as the bagpipes. So when you hear all of these instruments, you are supposed to fall down and worship the image. But let's take a look at something striking about this story. If we come over 
we have an illustration here and let's take a look the statue was 60 cubits tall the statue was 6 cubits wide and once you hear the sound of the six different instruments you were supposed to fall down and worship the golden image six six and sixty this story bears a striking resemblance to revelation chapter number 13 verse number 18 it talks about how antichrist in the end time will make the abomination that make its desolation and verse number 15 says anyone that will not fall down and worship the image should be killed oh by the way the mark of antichrist is six 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 sixty but wait there's more to this story Antiochus Epiphany was the original forerunner of Antichrist how he persecuted the Jewish people and it caused the Maccabean revolt it is commonly understood that he is the one that set up the first abomination that maketh desolation and even Yeshua said it in Matthew 24th chapter verse number 15 and when ye therefore shall see the abomination of the desolation spoken of by the prophet Daniel standing in the holy place whosoever readeth let him understand we see that King Nebuchadnezzar was really the start of what Antiochus Epiphany did as well and exactly what Antichrist is going to do as well. The abomination that maketh desolation. Let's take a look. Here's a coin of Antiochus Epiphany. He basically had fallen under the Greco Empire. He was a descendant of one of the four generals that took over after Alexander the Great had died prematurely at such an early age. So he persecuted God's people terribly. You can read Josephus, you can read the book of the Maccabees, how he just did some hideous things to them. He even set up the abomination that make his desolation. He was so bad, he even offered pig on the altar, which they had to dismantle at that point. And he set up, and they are not really sure at what the abomination that make his desolation is, because it's not directly in the writings, but a lot of people believe it to be a statue of Zeus with his own face on the front of it which will coincide direct with Nebuchadnezzar setting up a statue so we can take a look at this and we can see plainly Nebuchadnezzar set it up in the Babylonian Empire if we come down to the Greco Empire and Tychus Epiphany did the exact same thing then if we come down to the end times, the feet of clay and iron, the feet and toes of clay, or clay and iron, Antichrist will do the exact same thing. We can see how if you learn the stories of the Bible, they will repeat. God, we bless you. We give you glory. We give you glory. We give you honor. We thank you for your protection. We thank you for your help. We thank you for your guidance. Have your way. Be glorified and be magnified.